Okay, the countdown is on. The redacted Mueller report is set to be released tomorrow. I know that you and I Stay have tuned. been doing calisthenics to get ready for this. While White House aides tell CNN they do not expect any bombshells, however, current and former staffers who talk to Mueller are said to be worried about how the president will react. So joining us now, we have Margaret Talev, senior White House correspondent for Bloomberg News, Ellie Honig, former federal prosecutor and CNN legal analyst, and Laura Barone Lopez, national political reporter for Politico. And Ellie, I want to start with you because you are one of the people who will be sequestered in a room <laughs> when these 400 or lock, so. Lock, locked up. Locked in a room <laughs> when these 400 pages are released. And I'm fascinated by your process. And you have shared with us that the first thing you will do is hit the search function for five keywords. Let me pull them up for everybody collusion, dirt, junior. <laughs> McGahn and defer. Why are these to you the money words? So, uh, Allison, I'm going into the bunker. I'm consenting to it. I'm looking forward to it. I will lock in and, and go through this. Control F is a beautiful thing that we have nowadays where you can just search for the key terms. Collusion, first of all, a little bit of a trick there. I don't think Robert Mueller is going to use the term collusion mm. because it's not a legal term. There's no crime called collusion. He may quote somebody talking about collusion, mm. the president or Trump, but I want to see what does Robert Mueller make of the various contacts with Russia that we know about? And that brings me to sort of the second term, which is dirt, right? We know that this Trump Tower meeting happened where Donald Trump Jr., Paul Manafort, Jared Kushner, this happened. They met with Russians who offered dirt on Hillary Clinton in Trump Tower. And I am very interested to see what does Robert Mueller make of that? Maybe it's not a crime. Maybe there's not proof beyond a reasonable doubt to charge it as a crime. But is it a security breach? Is it an abuse of power? Which brings me to the third term, junior. And I'm talking here specifically about Donald Trump Jr. That's one of the big mysteries to me. Mueller never interviewed Trump Jr. He never subpoenaed Trump Jr. Was he a target? Typically, if you have someone who's a target, you don't subpoena them. But targets usually get charged. And Donald mm -hmm. Trump Jr., of course, has not been charged. What does he make of Jr.'s attempt to get this dirt from mm -hmm. Russia? Did he perhaps refer Donald Trump Jr. to one of the U.S. attorney's offices mm -hmm. for future investigation? Fourth is McGahn, and that's for Don McGahn, who was counsel for Donald Trump for quite a while. This is getting into the obstruction piece. McGahn was inner, inner circle. He was there when a lot of the internal conversations happened. Specifically, one of the things we know McGahn was involved in was the president wanted to fire Robert Mueller, and Don McGahn apparently talked him out of it. And so McGahn gave 30 hours worth of testimony uh, to Robert Mueller, and it'll be really interesting to see what he learned. And finally, the last word is defer, and what I mean by that is who did Robert Mueller intend to make this decision on obstruction? We know Mueller said evidence is too close to call. Did he mean to defer that decision to William Barr? I don't think so. Or did he mean to defer that to Congress, which mm. is, of course, the only entity that can really do anything about it since DOJ will not indict? So maybe Congress would be the sixth word on that list, right, Ellie? Could Let's be, see. yep. All right, uh, that's fascinating. Margaret, to you, um, there, there's a key question in terms of is there going to be a difference in what is what the public gets to know from the Mueller report between what is released in the redacted version, the bar version of it tomorrow morning, versus what the public may end up seeing because of these Freedom of Information Act requests, right? How, how why do you expect that divide, the delta, to be there? Yeah, I mean, uh, Poppy, and good morning, Allison. I think uh, we'll uh, see this with the color coding and what's blacked out to some extent. But look, already we've seen uh, President Trump and his legal team um, uh, push a lot of issues to the courts to decide. And, and we have every reason to believe that this will be similar to some extent, that there's going to need to be a FOIA process and a court process, uh, and uh, that if Democrats don't get what they think they're entitled to, uh, that they're going to push in court for it. And so I think uh, the question is both legal uh, in terms of what uh, do ultimately the courts determine that Congress and or the public is entitled to, and also political, uh, because when the timing is spaced out like this, when you have uh, two years worth of an investigation and then you have a four page summary and then the president is able to define the narrative between the time of the four page summary and the 400 page report. And then some of the reports blacked out and then you go to court then you have to wait till the courts come out to see what's in it. it you know, you are both running the clock between now and the election and the public becomes tired of one storyline or they set their views and they turn their attention elsewhere. And so this kind of tug of war between 
um, legally what information the public is entitled to know and Congress is entitled to have, mm -hmm. and how fast people are entitled to have it, has a lot to do with the way public opinion uh, now is set heading into the election cycle. Laura, CNN is reporting that uh, current and former aides in the White House are nervous about some of this being made public, understandably. You know, they don't want what they had to testify to under oath mm. to be um, available for general consumption. Right. It's, it's understanding that they're nervous. Barr has said that he is not going to redact stuff simply because it may be damaging to the president. He has said, however, that he, um, you know, would redact stuff that may involve uh, private citizens. So that could include uh, Don Jr. Uh, we know that Democrats want the public to be able to see the underlying evidence. They also want the public to be able to see um, the grand jury uh, information. They do agree, though, that classified information should be uh, maintained, you know, uh, classified. But Democrats are very frustrated right now. Uh, they expect a lot of redactions, and they are already readying uh, subpoenas, uh, a subpoena, um, in order to get more information uh, because uh, they're, they're really preparing for the fact that Barr could have a heavy pan in, in redacting this report. Uh, it's sort of a two-pronged fight here, Ellie. Of, of course, the Democrats fight on, on seeing uh, for Congress to see the entire Mueller report, but then also the, the fight among congressional Democrats to uh, subpoena the Trump administration on, on, on numerous fronts. And, and my question to you is we're seeing how uh, tough Trump's lawyers are at fighting back on this, but how much confidence should they have legally in being able to resist these congressional subpoenas? Yeah, so Poppy, this is a legal battle that is definitely going to happen, whether it's in the context of Congress trying to get the full Mueller report or trying to get information on the, the security clearances that yeah. were given to Jared Kushner and others. At some point or other, this will come to a head in the courts. Now, on the one hand, Congress has a very broad ability. Uh, the, the fundamental task that Congress has is oversight and investigation. And so I think courts will generally side with Congress so long as the request is not completely out of line, so long as it generally falls within the oversight ability. But as a practical matter, if I'm looking at this from the White House's point of view, there's a real incentive to just drag your feet here. This Congress is only in session for under two more years. And you can drag these things out in court. There's trial court, there's appeals, there's potentially Supreme Court. And so there may be a legitimate strategy here. I don't know if it's legitimate, but there may be an effective strategy here uh -huh. of just delay, 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 and try to run out the clock. So it'll be interesting. And I think Congress should do their best to expedite this. And there's ways you can go to a court and say, we need an expedited decision. You can even go direct to the Supreme Court in extreme situations, mm -hmm. and that may be necessary here. Yeah, because by the way, this is beyond just the stuff in the Mueller report, Margaret. This is about security claims. This is yeah. about things that, you know, most Americans say that they're quite concerned with. So uh, if this, I mean, if the White House is already saying we're not going to hand over the information that Congress wants, then obviously the court battle is next. Well, that's right. And, you know, Allison, there are some elements of executive privilege that are sort of long protected. The, any administration has an ability to have a lot of deliberations internally. Uh, but if your default mode is that it's all... Uh, either covered by privilege or you're just not going to do it, uh, then of course it's going to force a court battle. Democrats want the court battle anyway. And the question really is, uh, you know, it's April now of 2019. And if you can uh, if you can expedite something through the courts in 12 or 13 months, uh, then the president mm. maybe has a political problem if he delays. But if yeah. this drags on for two years, he runs he runs the clock. Finally, just to, to put a button on it, Laura, any political risk for the Democrats here in terms of overreaching in the court of public opinion, in terms of, you know, the president calls it presidential harassment? Do Democrats need to tread carefully in terms of how hard they push on certain aspects of their investigation? Well, they do have a balancing act to play, right? Uh, even though the public has overwhelmingly said that they do want to see the full Mueller report. Mm -hmm. So I think that them pushing to get as much information as possible won't necessarily hurt them. But again, they are you know, treading this line with we're not going to pursue impeachment. Right. We still have all of these uh, details that we're pursuing, whether it's his tax returns or other investigations that they have. Uh, and they're very careful not to use the impeachment word. Also, I was just on the trail and no one is really talking about the Mueller report. Everyone is still talking about health care. They're talking about um, other issues. All right. Laura, Ellie, Margaret, thank you very much for helping to preview it with us.